Well, hello. My name is Tom Willemain. I'm one of the co-founders of Smart Software and I'm in charge of the research operation. Today I want to give you a very light overview of some of the most common inventory control policies that our customers use. We'll talk about three today. There's a fourth which will be the subject of a separate little demo. The three uh, are actually divided into two groups. There's one called a periodic review inventory policy and there are two that are called continuous review inventory policies. And the continuous review, as you might expect from the name, says you're constantly keeping an eye on the inventory and looking to see whether it's dropped so low that you have to do something. You have to respond and restock. With the periodic review, you're not quite as vigilant. It's a simpler and probably less efficient solution, but for many companies it's easier to implement. And the periodic review policy says you let what's going to happen happen and every now and then periodically, like once a week or even once a month, you take stock of where your stock is and you decide about how to replenish. So those are the three we're talking about today. The fourth one is called MRP logic or forecast based inventory planning and that involves a larger time horizon. The three we're talking about today are in one form or another reactive to the random fluctuations in demand. So that's our subject matter. We're going to start by, as we always should, before we get into the technology details, why do we care about this? How does all this math and probability math figure into the business needs of the company. And basically there's a fundamental trade-off that every inventory professional has to wrestle with all the time. And that trade-off is a balance, finding a comfortable place to balance two opposing forces. One is the need to keep inventory levels low and the other is to keep item availability high so that your customers get what they ask for when they ask for it. So let me draw a crude representation of that fundamental trade-off curve. So on the vertical axis we'll put cost and on the horizontal axis we'll put item availability. And the dynamics of inventory policy force a kind of trade-off. If you freeze your policy, you're going to be someplace on this curve. And the curve ends up being very steep here. If you want to go to higher and higher levels of availability, you have to endure higher and higher levels of inventory investment and therefore the cost of doing business. So we can imagine three places on this curve. There's A, B, and C. At point A, you're spending very little on the care and feeding of inventory. But you're also not doing very well by your customers because there might be a very high chance that you'll stock out when somebody wants something. And you'll have to either lose the business or back order. In either case, there aren't many happy faces when that happens on either side of the, of the transaction. You could go to point B somehow, and we'll talk about how you would move from A to B. You could go to point B and now you're enduring more cost, but you're doing better by your customers. And finally, you could go to point C, in which case you're getting increasing costs, but you're also making the items more and more available. And of course at some point there's 100% availability and uh, after a while it kind of gets ridiculous to keep put, putting more money in because 99.999% is probably good enough for everybody. So your, your goal in managing an inventory policy and even in choosing one is to decide which curve you're on. And with certain technological improvements you could actually shift the curve. So a better curve would be this one where every level of availability is actually cheaper. That's a separate topic, but whatever you're doing now without changes 
put you someplace on this curve. And most companies, unfortunately, don't think of both axes at the same time. There will be people, maybe the sales managers, who care a lot about availability because they want to be able to say yes to every customer who requests your product. And there are other people who just worry very much about cost. And there aren't enough people who understand that there's a balance between these. And the company has to think about both the cost and the availability at the same time. Well, software today allows us to show where we are on that curve and to give us a method, for instance, to move this way or this way depending on our corporate strategy.